Hello and welcome to Adam's Workshop. All right, guys, I've been wanting this for a little while. Um, I am going to introduce to you the Mixig High Voltage Differential Probe. This one is the DP10013. The other option would be the DP20003. This one, like I said, is the DP, I'm assuming for differential probe, 10013. So here we have it. Comes in a nice case. Looks like the similar case, similar case that my current probe came in. I mean, actually it looks like the, pretty much the same exact case. High voltage differential probe. Now, you ask, why would you need a high voltage differential probe for automotive use? Well, I'm going to ask you guys to put in the comments what you think it can be used for. The main reason I got it is because I think this would be used for, make sure I'm in the shot there, I think this could be used for um, voltage drop testing. As you know, with our scopes, when we plug a lead in, yeah, it has two but one two wires coming off of the single lead, but one has to go to ground, and so now you're left with, you know, one lead to poke and prod with. Um, whereas with a multimeter, you have two leads, so you can do voltage drop tests. So whenever I'm out there and I have to do a voltage drop test, I can't use my scope. I always have to break out a multimeter, a DVOM. Well, here we go. That's why I got this. So what does it come with? It comes with a warranty card. Do, 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 do. Warranty card. It comes with a user manual. I know this is not going to be great. Just kind of wanted to let y'all see what's in it. Y'all can pause this and look at these. I'm not going to read the whole the whole manual to you guys. I don't think anybody wants me to sit here and read this whole manual. And it does now. It does tell you um, to twist it. it. Actually says. Twisting the input leads together can help reduce noise and improve the probe's high frequency frequency response when measuring signals. Um, so there you have it. Um, another one thing I do want to point out um, is this here. Let's see where to go. Where to go? Here we go. Extending the input leads, can you all see that? Extending the input, I'm right here on number number two. Extending the input leads may introduce more noise during measurement. If extra extension lead is necessary, please ensure the extension leads are of equal length and the input signal frequency is under 10 megahertz. Otherwise, measurement errors may occur. I'm telling you all that for a reason. I will show you here in just a second. All right, so there's paperwork that comes with it. Here is the probe. And it also comes with um, these neat little things here. Let me show you. I'm trying to stand that up where y'all can see. So yeah, you get, you get two extra alligator clips. Um, if you bought the ATO, your scope came with these. Um, but you can never have you can never have too many of them. In fact, I thought I lost a ground one um, a couple days ago. I thought I left it in a customer's car. Um, fortunately, I found it later. It does come with um, two probes, like multimeter probes, a red and a black. Of course, this does come off here. Now you, it almost looks like there's a switch there the, to adjust the attenuation, um, but there's not. And there are four four millimeter banana plugs. 
like most scope accessories. So that's awesome. So that'll fit all your all your um, leads that are four millimeter bananas. Um, whether it's scope, I know my, all my power probe leads are gonna fix this. All my DVOM leads will fit these. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see what else do we got here? Um, these are pretty neat right here comes with two positive and a negative um, these are really flexible which is neat when you push this button here when you push look I'm gonna push the button like this you get these little prongs that you get these little prongs that come out to grab your wire with so that's pretty neat huh I like that I don't have anything like those right now and like I said they're flexible so that that's pretty cool they're both flexible I mean they're identical ones black ones red um, so that's cool get some extra some extra um, accessories and then it come here this is I'm trying to prop that up with my lap using my laptop this actually feels a level little heavier than I thought I, I don't know why I thought it was gonna be super oh, oh excuse me I thought it was gonna be super light I bought one of those um, oh, I can't think of the name of the brand right now um, you know one of those little boxes to for um, doo -doo 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 -doo, for what the heck is it for for fuel injectors to pulse the fuel injectors um, if you want to test your fuel injectors you can set it you know to to pulse to open for a certain amount of time and you have a few different settings anyway it looked all great in the picture and then you when you get it it like weighed nothing i mean it still works good don't get me wrong so i don't know why i was thinking this was going to weigh like almost nothing i mean it's not heavy don't get me wrong it is light but it, at least it does feel like there's something inside of there so anyway this is it um like i said i have the the lower voltage of the lower voltage of the two this one goes up to 1300 volts you see here it says category two and then you have two options you have a 50 to 1 attenuation and a 500 to 1 attenuation i believe the 50 to 1 test up to 130 volts and the 500 to one attenuation is for testing up to 1300 volts it is 100 megahertz and this here just like the the mixig current clamp it does not have a battery it is powered by us usb cable as you can see this one this part right here it's going to plug in right here and then the regular looking USB part is going to plug right into your scope or if you're not using a scope, you know, something else to power USB. And there you have it. Um, this side here is the BNC. We'll just kind of get an idea of how long this is. I haven't even opened this up yet. I was waiting to show you guys. I mean, I looked in the box, but I haven't like taken this stuff off. So, um, get an idea here. Actually, I'll do one better and I'll grab a tape measure. And let's see, from the box to the tip is, looks like 33 inches. So, you got 33. 33 inches from here all the way down to here. It's 33 inches. Um, let's see on the probe side. On the probe side, wow, that's not super long. Um, I tell already I'm going to wish that was longer for what I plan on using it for. Let's see, we're looking at, oh no, I can't see through the camera. I'm just going to measure and I'll tell you guys. I'm not sure what y'all can see right now through the camera. That looks like just over, eh, just about 17 inches. Uh, man, I'm getting frustrated. I'm just going to stand it up back. 
man, it's just not a good place to stand that up. Um, all right, so 17 inches. Um, yeah, that's that's gonna be a problem. Uh, I sure wish those were a couple, two or three meters. Cause like I said, the my idea for this, the reason I got this is for voltage drop. In fact, my wife's car, I'm a personal vehicle, um, I think she just needs a battery, but I'm going to test the alternator and, you know, I'm going to want to test from the, the battery positive to the positive going in the alternator. I'm going to want to test from the battery negative to the casing and, um, ah, somebody keeps texting me. Anyway, um, yeah, so, so I'm going to be wanting to reach, you know, a little further than this. That's why I mentioned in the user's manual, they say if you are going to extend length, uh, what was it, make sure it's even, and also make sure... Yeah, make sure the leads are even, and that um, the input signal frequency is under 10 megahertz. So... What I'm thinking is, well, I have my power probe lead set that I purchased, um, but those are different lengths. I believe it's one foot, three foot, and a six foot. I could maybe buy another three foot and, and or six foot one, or I can just use um, leads from my multimeter. These are the ones I use most. Um, no reason. It's just the ones I grab most. Well, actually, I like how these ones screw on the end here with the alligator clip. It's just pretty convenient. I use these quite often. Um, so, well, no, actually, that's not going to plug. That's not going to be able to plug into there because that's going to be male. Yeah, see, that's male to male. Now, with my um, power probe lead set, I do have a thing I could plug in here, I think, where I could put those two together. Um, anyway, I'll figure that out. I'll let you guys know what I come up with. Um, I'm going to try and make a video here shortly. I have to wait till, unfortunately, I have to wait till the sun comes down. Otherwise, you will not be able to see the screen. Um, when I make videos, that's why all my videos you'll notice are at nighttime. Um, come December, January, that will no longer be a problem as my wife and I are having a house built and I'm going to have a nice little two car garage and a nice flat two car um, driveway. So I'll be able to make my videos in the garage and um, yeah, I'll be able to set the lighting up how I want it. I'll be able to make videos anytime, day or night. I can wake up in the middle of the night if I want, go out in the garage and make some videos. I think there'll be better videos. I'll be able to set up, you know, cameras better and whatnot. Um, instead of being out here, you know, in the dark or under direct, under direct sunlight. So I am looking forward to that. But like I said, it won't be built until roughly December or January. Anyway, guys, like I said, my plan is to use this for voltage drop testing. I plan on making a video here this evening doing just that, just to just to kind of show y'all it in action. And if y'all could think of any other reason to use a high voltage differential probe for automotive use, drop it in the comments. Let me know, let everybody else know. Um, I'm really, I'm really open up to open to some ideas. I want to hear what y'all are thinking about that. Um, real quick, since I have it up, I might as well show y'all here um, some of the some of the settings, or not settings. I'm sorry, some of the specs. I know if you're like me, you you want to know everything about whatever you're buying. So here I'm on the Mixig website. They're listing it for 170. They're listing for 170. Here's a general description on it. I'm not going to read it all. I'm just going to scroll down. It is 100 megahertz. I will mention that. You, attenuation, I already told you all, 50 to 1 and 500 to 1. 
That's each of your buttons right here. Yep, 50 to 1 and 500 to 1. And it, I mentioned it does plug into the scope using a USB, so you do not have to worry about dead batteries because that always sucks. I don't know how many things I have that I don't even use just because the battery's dead because I just never think about buying batteries when I'm at the store. Um, so anyway, here, I'm just going to kind of let you all see this. I'm not going to go reading it all. Um, just give you all an idea here. Just a little idea between the two. The one I have is this one right here, the DP113. And then you have here the, was it, 2003 or 2003, I guess you'd say, a 20003. Both 100 megahertz. Rise time, both 3.5 nanoseconds. Attenuation, 50 to 1 and 500 to 1 on the one we, we got. And then 200 to 1 and 2000 to 1 on this one. This one goes up to, look at that, you could test up to 5,600 volts. I don't know what, I don't know what you'd be testing to test that, you know. It's just not, not my field, not nothing that I'm involved in. That's why I went with this one over here. Because um, that's going to by far cover my range as far as looking, diagnosing with automobiles. Um, I'm not going to read all this off. Um, this I don't understand. Like here it says category 3, 1000 volts. And this says category 2, 1000 volts. What's up with that? Somebody tell me why, why does it do that? Wouldn't they both be the same category if they're both 1000 volts? Or is it because this one goes up to 5,600 volts, that goes to category 3? I don't know. Y'all let me know. I'm, I'm, just a, I'm just a guy. Likes to work on cars, not a scientist. Although I do act like one sometimes when I'm out there messing around with stuff. I do like pulling stuff apart, seeing how it's built and stuff. I like building my own circuits and playing with stuff like that. Anyway, I'm not going to read all this off. I'm just going to kind of scroll through so you guys can see. And that's it, guys. All right, I'm going to end this video. Just wanted to show you real quick. And um yeah, so apparently if you buy the other one, you get um you get those there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what those are. I guess they're they're like the I guess they're like um, like these ones, but different, maybe newer, something newer. Um, anyway, all right, guys, um, I'll see you all outside here, hopefully, in just a little bit. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in the channel. Hit a like, hit a dislike, subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you. Like I said before, and I say it all the time, because I am very appreciative to every one of my subscribers. Every one of y'all make a difference. And each of y'all encourage me to keep doing this. Alright, thanks guys. Thanks for stopping by Adam's Workshop.